So what I want to tackle today is the audio effect rack in the context of creating a spectral delay. Delays are awesome and they should be in like every track, but how are you going to use them? If you just slap a delay on the whole signal all the time, it just sounds really elementary. So a way that you can control where the delay happens and when and by how much is through using the audio effect rack in combination with a couple other devices. Let's go ahead and hit play and check out our sketch. Not too bad. Nothing too crazy going on here. I might change my baseline up a little bit just so it's not so boring. Maybe go down a whole step as if it's not low enough. But now I'm going to go over here to my drum beat. I'm going to make this delay. Now, at the very end of this whole kit, which is right here, I can put my auto filter. The auto filter is what makes this whole delay line spectral because now we're only delaying a certain part of the spectrum. But there's a problem with this and the audio effect rack will be our solution. The problem is that there's no dry wet mix on this auto filter. So check it out. So like, well I have to turn this off and it's silly. So what we do is we create a group by hitting Command G, selecting both the devices, hitting Command G, and now we can expose our chain list. This is our delay line. And then right under it, we're going to control click and create a chain and call this by hitting command R, dry. So now we have a delay line and a dry feed. Final step to this very simple little rack is to assign a couple of macros. So I show them here. The first macro I want to map is my filter cutoff. I'll put that on macro one. And the next macro I'd like to map is my wet mix. I'll put that on macro eight. So now this is basically just like a return track, just like built onto the track. Nothing too crazy here, called spectral delay. And before I hit save, I'm going to hit mapping mode here and customize my ranges a little bit. I know my low pass filter or my band pass, I never want it to go below like 200 or so and never above maybe like 10k. And then my chain volume for the delay, I mean plus six is probably a little crazy. Let's pull it down a little bit. There you go. I'll call it input cutoff. Maybe color code these things. Save it into my library. A big mistake that people make when they're creating their own racks is they worry about populating all these macros. The less macros you map, the more fun the device will be to use. Because if you can just keep it really like a utilitarian tool that just does one thing, then whatever context you're applying it to, like whatever song or music score or whatever you're doing, you can start adding on to it. But I like to keep my library racks pretty simple. Um, I even have some saming, naming methodologies where I'll call, I'll write WIP, like work in progress after spectral delay, so I know that it's like a, something I'm working on. Or else I'll name it after one of my artist aliases if I feel like it's like totally done and amazing. So like I have this subtropic dub delay in my library, which is our subtropic sampler. I just know that that's just like the mothership amazing creation that is ready to go. Like here's my returns for my subtropic artist. And then some of them other ones will say work in progress, whatever. So then last but not least, just a little side note. I always make sure to put my audio effect rack folder from my user library right down here in my places directory. So that way when I'm using my push, I can just scroll down to the bottom of my browser and I can get away from these factory library presets and start loading my own cooler stuff that I made.